Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me this morning. And in this quick video, I want to discuss with you why when things start in Europe, they tend to spread through the rest of the world. This has been the case since certainly at the time of our founding fathers in the United States. And the things that are happening in Europe are really pretending, I think, some of the change and some of the challenges that we're going to be facing here very soon globally. And it will affect us in the United States. The first thing to be aware of right now that's really not being reported in the United States media for sure is that the UK is experiencing very serious drought. So much so that there are farmers, for instance, cattle farmers, that because there's been such a deficit of grass, they've already had to dip into their feed supply that has been stored up for the winter. So that is going to affect not only beef prices, but also the essentially the availability of beef during the winter and fall months because essentially if you don't have the necessities and the staples necessary to keep your stock fed and also to keep them watered that's another thing you know there's it's more than just there's not grass there's not water for these animals so that's going to affect your ability to deliver supply and then the supply that you can put on the market the prices are going to be affected by this also we're seeing right now in france that there's a terrible issue with drought and also with severe wildfires when you couple this with what's going on in ukraine and the conflict between our former nemesis russia we are setting up for some serious problems here we know, of course, in the United States, the issues that have been happening with, with flooding and with drought and with farmers not able to get their, get their crops in the ground in Nebraska and other places in the Midwest, which are obviously going to have impacts for our food chain in the United States. But when you couple together our food chain issues in the United States, but then also the issues in Europe and the issues in Ukraine, this fall and this winter is a this is a toss-up and it's not looking particularly good we haven't even touched into energy issues in the uk and also in other parts of western europe they're dealing with serious cost of living increases not just because of inflation but because of energy dependence that is a nexus of a whole bunch of different things, not just supply issues and trade issues with Russia and gas issues associated with Russia, but also the, ut the ultimate and utter failure of people who are so dedicated to their religion of, of green nonsense that they're dedicated towards investing lots of money in very energy inefficient production mechanisms so that now in times when they should be efficient and in times when they should have an infrastructure set up they have become captive to a dogma and a theology of the green religion and because of that they're vulnerable and their dependence upon powers that are not friendly to them right now it's biting them in the butt and it's a good lesson for us on the importance of being independent as best as we can and self-sufficient no one's going to be a hundred percent self-sufficient in, in whatever they do. But for us looking forward into the future, the Founding Fathers understood this very much. They understood that trends and things that start in Europe, they don't stay in Europe, which is why they were very, very concerned about being involved in entangling alliances and foreign adventurism, which is advice that we have completely disregarded for the past 120 years about in the United States. And now the issue that we've gotten ourselves into with NATO is that ever since we won, the, the Allies won World War II, the victory has cost us in a different way what the war did. You had the loss of life, obviously, the terrible loss of life associated with both World Wars I and II. But what happened, because Britain, the de facto superpower at the time, had been bombed into utter economic destruction by the Germans with the Blitzkrieg, the United States basically inherited the mantle of empire. Now you could make the argument that this was good, this was neutral, this was just the way of things, but the fact is that we did. And so the Marshall Plan, basically how in the world are we going to keep some sort of global stability 
after World War II, the Marshall Plan was basically substituting dollars for troops. We got the, the remnants of Europe indebted to us on the dollar and involved Europe in lending plans to try and use dollar diplomacy. And that worked. It worked for a while. But now, because of the nature of things, the reshuffling and the dynamic nature of, of the human species, this is a testy piece that is going to be checked again. War, famine, and disease, the universal experiences of the human being. They come in cycles. One usually begets the other two. And I can give you examples replete throughout the human narrative and the human experience of this. But because this window of Marshall Plan peace is drawing to a close, I think that we're going to see now a lot of destabilization on multiple different fronts. It's manifesting in ways that previously I think a lot of people were not even comfortable entertaining in their mind. But you have to assume from now on that if you're not energy independent, you're going to pay a premium of anywhere between 50 to 100% on top of inflation. So factor that in. You're going to be seeing a lot of social change as well because the amount of price change and economic instability that has resulted from all of this, war, famine, disease, you know, the pandemic, planned or otherwise, sparked a lot of change and a lot of trauma on to economic systems. And because of that, you know, people are only willing to absorb so much of that before they resort to non-peaceable means. And why is this? Like, what's, what's the nature of this evolution? When people cease feeling like they are being heard and like there are no other options, they are unable to check that animalistic aggression that is kept at bay in peaceable society. But peaceable society is really only a veneer. It's just the consolidation of violence capability by governments. And so when they're no longer satisfied to let the government run things, they're going to revolt. So the next thing I think we need to be aware of is aside from supply chain issues and aside from, from supplies being short, we need to be prepared for the possibility of massive instability, um, the rise of labor, definitely the rise of, of unions and the rise of more socialistic narratives. This is, this is the nature of things. You have the cycle of equity, meaning people want for there to be equal distribution of wealth and then you have this cycle of efficiency which is whatever there's enough wealth going around perceived there's enough wealth going around that people at least feel like there's not the need for regulation they can still get a fair shake but that's not what's happening right now because people perceive that prices are so crazy and the system itself is not working for them they're going to be pushing more towards cycles associated with the the veneer of equity. So be on the lookout for over the next probably 18 months rise in voter sentiment all over the world to be shifting to a place of more socialistic tendencies, which is going to mean more taxes on people who actually produce and more calls for universal basic income, things like that, basically because of supply line issues and because of trends. And some people argue that this was planned from the beginning. I don't know, but I do know that I don't have control over everything in this world. I just have control over my own sphere of influence. And part of that sphere is being well prepared as best as I can. Being prepared for things that history has taught us are inevitable throughout that cycle, war, famine, and disease. So I hope this video was helpful for you all today. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also stay with me and support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I have links below. If you want to train with me, you've got some opportunities. You can train online. I have an online course on medical preparedness. It's four hours. It's $129 and you can find that link below. Also, you can train with me in person. I had the opportunity available to train in Milwaukee, Wisconsin this year and also in Keller, Texas. And so those are available for sign up on the website, thepatriotnurse.com. Lord willing, I'm going to be releasing more online coursework here uh, within the next few months. I got to work hard on that. Uh, just trying to get my bearings and just make sure as best as possible that I'm doing my due diligence part as an educator and an instructor to bring you and my students the, the best information possible. And, 
um, the best format possible and to polish up my own game and skill sets as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you have a very, very blessed week. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye.